Mike Moore. Hello, everybody, and welcome again to another edition of Candlepin Stars and Strikes from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire, Dick Lutz, with Mike Morin, and it's our final ladder series of the season. We are looking for a sixth bowler to join five others who've already earned berths in our Tournament of Champions. Well, the season's going by so quickly, and a month from now, we'll start the Tournament of Champions. Up on top, as he has been all the way along, Gary Carrington, followed by Dave Richards, who won last week. Gary Santora, Mike Morgan, and Sean McKinley rounding out five. We'll add number six in the next few weeks. Let's meet our bowlers who will compete this afternoon in the first of four matches to determine that last participant in the Tournament of Champions. First, our number five seed, a veteran of television over the years, Hugh Ferguson from Hanover, Massachusetts. Good to have Hugh back. His first time here on WNDS, and we welcome him. Average of 118. Hugh's high single is 212. High triple coming in at 486. Bowls at the Hanson Athletic Association in Hanson, Massachusetts. And he will be taking on a young man who is making his television debut, his number four seed from Kingston, New Hampshire, is John Winchell. Yeah. That's right. Actually, first WNDS appearance for both bowlers, but uh, Mr. Winchell, a little bit younger than Hugh Ferguson. Average 124. His high single is 187. High triple, 441. And John bowls his league bowling at Sunnyside and Danvers and Exeter Lanes as well. All right, it's great to have you with us for our first match of this ladder series. Let's get right to it. We're coming back to Lita Lanes in Nashua for Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS right after this. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is brought to you by the Thompson Family of Dealerships in Nashua, New Hampshire. All right, here we go with five bowlers, one of whom will advance to the Tournament of Champions at the end of the season. There you see at the top of the seedings, Sean Baker, Chris Bovier, Bill Treeple, John Winchell, and Hugh Ferguson meeting this afternoon. It'll be Hugh Ferguson first to bowl here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. And there you get a good look at Hugh Ferguson, and we're ready to go. You no stranger to the bright lights of television. He's been on TV a bunch of times, but it's his first time on WNDS TV. Yep, 30 times his uh, television resume. 18 times a winner. That's impressive. That's very impressive. The old That's Channel 5 show. About a 60% winning ratio, huh? Very deliberate bowler. He's my age. As a matter of fact, he's a couple weeks older than I am. Uh -huh. Starts out with a nine box. So he's 53 years old. He's a Teamster truck driver for the Boston Globe. He and his wife, Pam, have been married for 33 years. Has a son, Glenn, 33 years old, and a son, Ross, 30 years old. And quite an impressive resume of bowling accomplishments over the years. He was telling me before we started taping, Michael, and there's the high low jack, which he once converted, by the way, yes. on the old Channel 5 show without the dead wood. Without the wood. Yep. But he was telling me before the show, and, and it's listed on his resume, that he appeared on the old Candlepin Pro show on Channel 7 back in the early 80s. I don't remember that show. I wasn't living here then, so I was not aware of that show. But I imagine we'll get some letters now and mail. Yeah, he said it was uh, taped in the same bowling lanes that uh, used to, to tape Bob Gamir's Candlepins for Cash show, which I, rem I remember very well. Mm -hmm. Bob Gamir's a good friend. and uh, But I just don't remember the pro show. It was a mixed doubles format, I think, he was telling me. And uh, just he said it was only on for a couple of years. Yeah. And I just have no recollection of it. There were a lot of bowling shows on between Tenpin and Candlepin over the years. I don't think too many people have kind of chronicled those shows. We took them for granted at the time, thought they'd always be with us, and now we're down to one bowling show, and that's ours. And here's John Winchell from Kingston, New Hampshire. 28 years old. First time ever on television. And he starts out with a spare. A nice spare for John, and the butterflies have a tendency to be quickly relieved when you make a shot like that. A former Rookie of the Year on the Pro Tour back in the 90s. 
And a newlywed, you might notice. Sure, it sure is. A little bit of a double dribble there at the line, leaving the four horsemen on the left side and the nine pin in the back, adding to the degree of difficulty of this shot. Almost made it. Gave it a great run. And a 10 box. So the early lead belongs to John Winchell. Hugh uh, Ferguson averages 118. A high single of 212. Breaks up the split on that shot and has a real good opportunity here. High triple 486. He rolled a 642 in the TV roll off. He and John Winchell tied at 642, but Winchell had the highest game in the series and earned the number four seed. Which really is a, mute, a moot point because they're pulling against each other to begin with, so it, it really doesn't affect seeding any. Ferguson with the spare, his first mark. Hugh, a member of the 1983 Massachusetts Bowling Association State Open team. They were, they were the champs, and he was in second place in singles behind veteran Don Richmond. No one got away from him, but he got a break on it, and he put seven in the spare. So he's got the one, the five, and the ten with a piece of wood at about a... 45 degree angle away from the head pin which may help in a favorable deflection since he's got the double wood with the one and the five. Missed the spare wow. there. Some familiar names up the ladder as we look at the seedings in the cut weeks ahead. Uh, Bill Trefull is the number three seed. Chris Bovier last year's Tournament of Champions winner is the number two seed. And Sean Baker is at number one. And an seven box for Hugh Ferguson. It really is a mixed bag of bowlers this time around. The veterans, the first times, the Tournament of Champions guy. A senior a Pro Tour member is here in Bill Trefel, who did very well, by the way, in the most recent WCBC tournament. Uh, which was held at Lucky Strike Lanes in Lynn. He came in third place, and he, uh, I believe, came in fifth place in the recent senior division uh, tournament. So we'll cover all that for you in the next couple of weeks. Keep you updated on uh, bowling that has to do with these men and women when they're not on television. You can kind of follow what they're doing with the tournaments that run for about six months during the year. We have $1,100 in our triple strike jackpot starting out this afternoon, a nine box for John Winchell. That hasn't been hit yet this year. Nope. Love to give it away. The bonus ball contest after today's match has a $20 cash prize. An opportunity for you at home to become involved. After every match, our winning bowler will bowl a ball and will pull a postcard out of the bin that is loaded with hundreds of cards sent from all over New England. You can send in your card with your name, address, and phone number and pick a number from 0 to 10. And there's a nice shot for a spare by John Winchell. Send your bonus ball postcard to bonus ball contest, care of Lita Lanes, 340 Amherst Street, Nashua, New Hampshire. And the zip is 03063. Famous four horsemen this time on the right side with the eight pin in the back, but there's some wood, looks to be frozen against the one and the three, which can do funny things with the ball. It's not as big a helper as you might think it is. Nice shot, nice spare. For Hugh Ferguson, a beauty. And that's his first smudge on the score sheet. The uh, eight pin, the last to go. So that uh, piece of wood actually did work in his favor. But you know how tricky it can be when it looks like it's good wood and it's not. On the spare. Into the second pocket on the left side. He put six in the spare. And a very makeable spare. The one, three, six, and nine. 
idea here is to hit uh, squarely between the one and the three to take out the back pin. Six in the spare right. and a 10 box, and we'll get our, our computer scoring squared away momentarily as we had a, a minor snafu, but we'll get it squared away for you. 67 through six boxes for Hugh. Now on the spare, will it go? It still wobbles. The eight pin surrounded there in the back of the row. Still wobbling, but will not go. It'll be nine in the spare and an opportunity for a couple of marks in a row. And there it goes. Two marks in a row for John Winchell. A chance for some bonus money. $50 goes to the bowler who puts three marks together back to back to back. And an opportunity here for John. He puts eight in the spare and has a good shot at it here. The wood is favorable. Bowler with the high string today. Gets another $50. So lots of ways to earn some extra money besides the positional money that is offered. Six pin is the key here. And he makes the spare three marks in a row. $50 in bonus money for John Winchell. Takes a 14 pin lead plus whatever he throws on that spare when he gets back up in the seventh frame. Hugh Ferguson now finds himself bowling from behind. Missed the head pin and he'll only take out four. He's been going left of head pin early on here. During the course of the afternoon, Michael and I want to tell you about our experience at Pilgrim Lanes where they had the fundraising event for the youngsters who will be bowling in Canada. Another great turnout despite a terrible day weather-wise. I got stuck in traffic going home that afternoon. I don't know about you. you. Didn't, no, I, I, I did not. I was miserable. I did not. Sat on 93 in Derry for about an hour without moving an inch. Well, if you've got to be stuck anywhere on 93, there's no better place than Derry, New Hampshire. Eight box for Hugh. But it was slow going and the traffic was backed up for miles and which made it all the more impressive that they had so many kids and pro bowlers show up that afternoon for that for that yeah. event. They do a great job over there for that. They really for do. Those kids. And I think we may have a little uh, tape a little footage that uh, Kevin LaFon shot while we were there. Kids and the pros and what uh, was a great time and I think we, we were going to try to show that at the uh, start of the next string. We had our match, and we're not quite ready to reveal the results of that. But uh, you'll know more about that as weeks go on. You know, one of the things that jumped out at me, and we talked about it briefly that afternoon, Michael, when we were there, was what a great job. Uh, oh, nice shot by Hugh wow. Ferguson there. Can't believe what he was able to cut shot that. for a 10 box. What a terrific job at the mic Tony Marie Baldinelli does in coordinating it all and getting everybody moving and keeping everything in motion and organized. and. Uh, very natural for her. She's really natural with the microphone. She's gunning for your job, Dick, so I'd be very, very careful. She was terrific. I was most impressed. And uh, as folks will find out when we do uh, finally play back uh, our grudge match, we had uh, the announcers of uh, Tom Morgan and Jackie Ray getting back at us. <laughs> nice shot by John. He does not convert the spare. So the bonus money stops at 50. And a nine box. So the scoreboard is all corrected. And through seven completed frames, it's John Winchell with an 18-pin lead up against a Ferguson 10 box in the eighth. Off the head pin again, but he gets a good break. The one and the two, the dead wood behind the, the head pin appears to be frozen to the two pin. You hit that head pin anywhere, you're going to make this go. one. You got frozen wood, you got wood in front. Got to hit the head pin. 
Oh. Missed it. Shot it, passed it to the right How side. How annoying is that? He had a chance to open up a bit of a lead on Hugh Ferguson, but not so. And there's the shot he wanted, a 10 box. He's at 103 and has that 18 pin lead with two boxes remaining in the first string. Got a piece of wood that needs to be cleared on lane 33. Paul Ouellette, our in-house scorekeeper, and uh, pulls double duty of clearing the deadwood when it goes in front of the fair play uh, line or the deadwood line, I should say. Chance for me to remind you that Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV is a presentation of the Thompson family of dealerships, McMulkin Chevrolet, Nashua Hyundai, Nashua Mitsubishi, and Nashua Daewoo all located in the New England Automotive Village on the Daniel Webster Highway in Nashua, New Hampshire. Hugh Ferguson is left with the six and the seven, piece of wood angled in front of and possibly touching the six pin. Played it off the wall, He's will it go, it's will gonna it go? go? It's gonna go, yes sir, there it is. What a great shot, and there's Hugh giving it the the cheer from the sidelines. You never give up in this game. You never, ever give up. As long as there's a pin moving on that lane, something can happen. A nice, nice break for Hugh. Get 10 pins back after trailing by 18. Third mark of the string for Hugh. John Winchell has four spares in the first string. Now Hugh works to fill his spare. Off the head pin, he'll put six. Six and a wiggle. Yeah. We oh. talked about the inclement weather at uh, on the Sunday that we went to Pilgrim Lanes, and this taping here today, of course, is a rescheduling of last week's, which was postponed oh. because of snow, the uh, miserable storm that we had. And again, today, on the day that we are taping, we're having a terrible weather day. Yeah, I still. And you see the crowd behind us that came for this match, the retaping today, the reschedule taping. It's remarkable that there are as many people here today as there are. An eight box for Hugh and a nine box rather for Hugh and a 110 first string for Hugh Ferguson. And yeah, we had about 24 inches of snow as everybody remembers there on that first Tuesday in March. So Tuesday has been kind of a bad luck day. It has been. We jinxed ourselves up because we had just spoken in uh, January how we, you know, in three years of doing the show together, we haven't <laughs> been snowed out and then back to back. We months. got rescheduled twice in a row. Yeah. Good first ball from John. Will he pick up the spare? Yes, he will. Spare in the ninth frame for John Winchell. Trying to pat his lead against the veteran Hugh Ferguson of 30 television appearances, but his first on WNDS's Candlepin Stars and Strikes. On the spare, put eight. And another opportunity for a mark for John. It's the two and the seven with a couple of pieces of wood up near the uh, lip of the plate where the lane drops off and the plate begins. It looks like it could be helpful. Guess it was not. Whoop, watch out, don't give up on it yet. Still don't give up on it. They get hit by two different pins and nothing goes. Not gonna happen. He is at 130. One thirty one for John Winchell a twenty one pin lead over Hugh Ferguson headed to string number two don't go away we're coming right back to Lita Lanes in Nashua New Hampshire for Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV. On the 25th of February, Michael and I participated in the 8th Annual Rock and Bowl of Pilgrim Lanes in Haverhill, Massachusetts. It was a great day. There you go. You see Tommy Morgan. Uh, that's Madison uh, Kelly, Bob and Mary Ann's daughter. Cookie Richards, Mike Morgan, Jackie Ray in the shot. One of our favorite viewers here. There's the babe, Gary Carrington, Sean Baker. You'll see him in a couple of weeks. And there's Michael raffling off one of the pins. All of the uh, funds raised helped send one kids to Canada. Stars and Strikes Tournament of Champions. One month until Dick and Mike bowl off. You have been making my life a living hell the last year, torturing me after your four-pin victory last year. 
this year, I'm coming at you, brother, strong. This is the month you need to watch Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS. Who will be victorious? <laughs> Who will be defeated? It all comes down in April. Candlepin Stars and Strikes Tournament of Champions, only on WNDS. And we're ready to go with our string number two here at Lita Lanes and set to begin is John Winchell and uh, great job by Kevin LaFond in putting that short tape together from our day at Pilgrim Lanes uh, in the end of February and we're looking forward to next year again. Yes. And we'll let you know plenty of advance. You can see how much fun it was. The kids bowling with their heroes, the professional bowlers, everybody. If you wanted to meet or bowl against a professional, you could do it. Of course, it cost you a couple dollars because, after all, it was a fundraiser. And Dick and I had a great time in our match. You'll see that, as you heard, in about a month. We can't, can't even give you a clue on what turned out. No, but I, I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm getting my own bowling balls for next year. <laughs> Here's a 10 for John Winchell. Michael owns his own bowling ball. Well, sure. I don't own my own yeah, bowling but, balls. But they're 15 years old, so all the good strings have been bowled out of them already. <laughs> Maybe I'll even get my own pair of bowling shoes. <laughs> well, they had to burn burn the ones that you wore that day, Dick, so. Uh, it was fun, though. Well, back to the business at hand. Uh, John Winchell takes a commanding 21-pin lead into string number two. And a spare oh, on a tough shot for John as he played the wood perfectly. He got the break and the spare. That's his fifth mark of the match. He had, check it, his sixth mark of the match. He had five spares in the first string on his way to a 131. I think the ball actually took out the 10 pin before it got hit by uh, another pin banked off the left wall. Now Hugh Ferguson. A veteran from Hanover, Massachusetts. Picks one. You and I can relate to that. I think I had one of those during our, our little match last month. Three more. A couple of real straight on shots for Hugh Ferguson. That's going to be a five box for Hugh. Well, he only lost five pins. Uh, Mitch or uh, Winchell didn't spare in the first frame, so, but he did in the second. He bowls out of the Hanson Athletic Association in Hanson, Massachusetts. He's been bowling for over 50 years. So since he was probably three years old. That's about right. Question is, Dick, do you remember the very first time you went bowling? I have a vague recollection of he missed the spear. I'm not sure it was the first time that I went bowling, but I have a vague recollection of going down the Cape with my family one time, and they had pin boys. Oh. It was one of the last times, I think, that they had pin boys. And a 10-10 box for Hugh Ferguson. Boy, I, I think the first time I ever bowled was at Metro Bowl on Park and Worcester, which is no longer there. Okay. How old were you? Young. Yeah. Boy, I can remember, is like it was yesterday, age seven. 10 pin bowling in Redford Township, Michigan, outside of Detroit. 36, my first game. Isn't that funny how you can remember something like that? Here's John with a one in the spare. They both picked one. But John's was in a spare, which is a little bit more hurtful. And he almost converted it. Now, I have an older brother, six years older than mm -hmm. I, so, and he was a bowler, so uh, when my dad was a, a bowler of sorts, not a regular bowler, but he did once in a while. I think I might have told you one time he was one of the last who used to hold a ball in each hand for balance. And I, you don't see that anymore. Yeah, I've only know, know one, known one person who's done that. Used to see it quite a bit. Used to see it quite a bit. Did you? Yeah. Not in ten pin, you did. No. <laughs> well, look at this. Chopped Chicken him City. right off the head pin. Takes out the uh, one and the eight. I bet if you ask Ray Simino, the uh, proprietor here, or Sean Howard, the manager, although Sean's a little younger, uh, Ray will tell you that there used to be quite a few guys that would bowl with uh, holding a ball in the, in the free hand. Two 
two, four, and seven with some wood in front. Hoping for a ten box is John Winchell of Kingston, New Hampshire. Man in the roofing business. Got to ten the hard way. Great chance now for Hugh Ferguson to make some ground back. He's been trailing almost the entire way, but a couple marks here, and we'll have ourselves a tight match going into the break. Threw it off to headpin again. They're still going. He ends up with a pretty good shot. He's got the one, the three, and the six. Piece of wood frozen to the six pin, which is going to help him. Yeah, it's in a pretty uh, benign position, actually. He has the spare for Hugh Ferguson. The wood did not factor into it, but he got the spare anyway. Sometimes it's just reassuring knowing that the wood is there. I don't know, it gives you more confidence on, on some of those shots. Now Hugh working on a mark, tries to get back closer. He trailed by 21 pins after the first string. He will put eight or will it be nine don't go away it looks like it'll be an eight in the spare and a pretty good spare set up here you don't want to waste these shots especially when you get such a nice break the seven pin going down in the corner really made this a makeable spare he missed it oh man door opens you gotta walk through it so he's going to pick up a couple of pins. It'll be a 10 box. He's picked back three pins. It's an, eight, uh, an 18 pin lead for John Winchell. As we go to the break, we're coming back to Lita Lanes in Nashville, New Hampshire with more of Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV. John Winchell set to bowl, fifth frame, second string. He has an 18 pin lead over Hugh Ferguson. As we reach the halfway point of this match. Our sixth ladder series. John right in the pocket on that one but not a lot to show for it. The six seven eight and nine. That's an unusual leave right there. So there is some wood, wood set up pretty well here. Very good wood. Now well the, the one in, out in front's not not so good. It was and now it's coming to a rest. But he's got no choice but to use it. Well, the nine pin remains. Everything else swept away. John is uh, one of several uh, professional bowlers that is into sports collectibles. He's a huge Michael Jordan fan, Dick. Has a number of Michael Jordan items. Favorite keepsake is an autographed Jordan baseball. Remember when Michael Jordan took a year or two and played uh, minor league baseball for the Birmingham Barons? Couldn't hit a curveball. Is that what his problem was? Really? He also has a Jordan figurine from the Space Jam movie, which uh, Michael starred. Still remaining the four, seven, and the nine. Working his way through a bad uh, spare configuration. And gets nine for the frame. So again, Hugh Ferguson has an opportunity in front of him up against two John Mitchell nine boxes. And uh, Hugh's had some very good uh, pinfall breaks today. He's been off the head pin a number of occasions and has left some very makeable spares. But he'll go too far to the, once again, too far to the left, and still a great spare opportunity. Especially with the wood set up the way it is now. Again, the head pin is yep. key here. One, the two, I'm sorry, the one, three, and the ten, with wood between the three and the ten. Missed it. I oh, missed the head pin. Opportunity squandered for veteran Hugh Ferguson, 53 year old bowler from the South Shore of Massachusetts out of Hanover. That time he makes the 10. 
You look back on matches like that and you say, my goodness, yep. that's one that I should have made. And he picked up one more pin. Yeah, he's staying close, but he really should be leading at this point. And again, going left of head pin. Takes out only four on the left side. So he's got the four horsemen and double wood, the five and the nine as well over on the right side. Very difficult spare. Leaves the five pin all by itself. Best he can do is a 10 box. So he'll get another pin back. Gonna have to do better than one pin a frame though to, to win this match. He picks the five nicely. And it's a 16 pin lead for John Winchell. What do we start at 18 pins, Dick? 21. 21. That's right, 21. So he's shaved five pins off of the uh, Winchell lead. John crossed over to the Brooklyn side and left the three, the five, the six, and the ten. The uh, fans here are looking for something to applaud for. Only Not going to make it. Every week we try to read a couple of cards and letters that are sent in by you, our viewers. We'd love to hear from you from wherever you may be watching Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Send it in to uh, Candlepin Stars and Strikes. WNDS TV 50 television place Derry New Hampshire 03038 there you go and uh, we will acknowledge a couple of cards one we got from Mrs. Catherine O'Loughlin of Canton Massachusetts I enjoy Dick and Mike every Saturday and Sunday they do a great job God bless them Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. O'Loughlin. Happy St. Patrick's Day, I might add, coming up, or is it beyond by the time this is seen? Uh, this show airs on the 18th of March, so it's a still St. Patrick's Day weekend. I think there'll be a few people that are a little green around the gills <laughs> Sunday morning. Certainly, you wouldn't be one of those, Dick. No, 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 no. Nay, nay. So, John, a 10 and an 8. And another opportunity for Hugh Ferguson. John Winchell has just one mark in this in this string, and he only put a one in the spare, so the door is open. Ferguson right on the pocket that time. The seven pin is still standing. And it can be used as a guide. I mean, he's got, he can use half the lane to make the spare. Right, if it doesn't roll back any farther, I, I, I think he's think okay. I think it will. And he's got a piece of uh, wood behind the first piece of wood, which will even be cushion more helpful. It, yeah. yeah, cushion the impact oh, oh he made it oh, oh man he worried it all the way down but he made it it takes a man to shoot it that way i gotta tell you i'd be using the deadwood i'd be going to the right on that so now if your ferguson works on a spare and we're virtually even in this match within a mark Off the head pin, he puts six in the spare. No wood to help him out. The one, three, six, and the seven. Very, very deliberate. Missed it. Missed the head pin. Should mention the WCBC Pro Tour was in action a couple of weekends ago at Lucky Strike Lanes and Lynn. Gary Carrington took home first prize at 1389. Chris Petrin was second, about 60 pins behind. Nice 10 box for Hugh In Ferguson. Third place, Dick, is the uh, challenger that we're going to see next week, Bill Trefel. Uh, let me see. Jeff Bugia, who we saw here on our show not long ago, was in fourth. Mark Gregory, who's been on our program, came in fifth. For the women, Glennis Hickey was first. Karen McCormick second. Janet Pock was third. Anne-Marie De Chiara and Debbie Scannell rounding out the top five for the women at Lucky Strike Lanes and Lynn on the Pro Tour for the March action. Had a chance to bowl a little bit with Janet Pock at uh, Pilgrim Lanes. Uh, she was on a lane yes. next to me while we were warming up. What a terrific bowler she, she is. She paid you a very nice compliment, by the way, she that I don't, I don't think you heard. Hmm? Look at this. 
she said uh, you know if he worked at it he could be a really good bowler yeah, nice seem to be a natural I, I would agree with her nice shot for John 10 I, box I won't tell you what Tom Morgan said about you this <laughs> the Morgan guys are great especially in a crowd situation like that they're in their element aren't they they really are they love those kids and the kids love the Morgans and all the pros that helped out Tony Marie Bald and Ellie Lopes at her uh, annual fundraiser John's gonna need a mark to break a hundred here in the second string and you first got a tough shot catching up not going to make it, so he'll be under 100. 131 first string and under 100 in the second string. That's the nature of Candlepin bowling. That'll be a 10 box and 96 in the second string for John Winchell. 227 through the first two for John Winchell, a bit below his average of 124. So we should have a pretty tight match going into the third string now. He's handing it to Hugh Ferguson on a platter. Ferguson, however, has not been capitalizing. And again, off the head pin and a half Worcester to the left side. So he could actually lose ground here. Up against the John Winchell 10 box. John finished with two tens. Look at oh. that for a 10 box. How's that for a 10 the hard way? Nice. What a great shot with no wood. Great shot by Hugh Ferguson. Watch this shot. Wow. And important four pins for Hugh, too, I might add. It wasn't a spare, but he stood to lose some ground. Now he needs a mark. And again, he threw it to the other side of the head pin, to the right of the head pin. Leaves the four horsemen on the left. The 10 pin in the right corner. Another tough shot for Hugh Ferguson. It'll be about a 10 pin advantage. Unless he makes this. Well, It'll be about a 10-pin lead for John Winchell going into the third string. It's 10 right now. It'll oh. be an 8-pin lead. He finishes with Boy. a couple of real strong 10 boxes. A 109 second string for Hugh Ferguson. An 8-pin lead for John Winchell as we head to the third and final string of this first match of ladder series number six. We continue in just a moment on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. All right, Hugh Ferguson will be first to bowl in the third string of our match this afternoon against John Winchell with Winchell leading by eight pins over the veteran from Hanover, Massachusetts. He's had trouble finding the head pin. He's been to the left. He's been to the right. That time to the left of the head pin again. He gained back 13 pins of the 21 he trailed after the first string. And look at this for a spare. What a great shot by Hugh Ferguson. Four horsemen on the right. The four and the uh, seven on the left. Again, no wood. Just a straight on shot and he made it perfectly. Now that should get him pumped up for the rest of the game against John Winchell. The other bowlers lighting it up. You now it's amazing. Hugh Ferguson bowled a 109 in the second string and he picked up 13 pins. Yeah. Again on the spare, off the head pin. There they go. Look Whoa, at that. Look at this. Put nine in the spare, leave the seven pin, wood all over the deck. Yeah, for a guy who's barely hit the head pin today, he's had some amazing pinfall. You go out, you go straight out. You go straight at it. Yeah, definitely. I might, I might try the wood. There's more wood. He gets the pin, right on. 
All right, he's feeling a little better about things now. And a chance for some bonus money for Hugh Ferguson next time he steps up. We've only given away $50 in bonus money this afternoon, and that went to John Winchell back in the first ring when he had five marks, including three in a row in the fourth, fifth, and sixth frames. So now the pressure shifts. John Winchell responds with a pocket shot, leaves the four pin standing. What a solid four pin. That didn't move an inch. So a good spare opportunity for uh, John Winchell, who needed against Hugh Ferguson's first frame spare, which he filled with a nine. Nice spare for John Winchell responding to the challenge. Got a note from Kenneth DeVoe of North Andover, Massachusetts, Michael, and he asked a question. Funny, you and I were talking about this before we started taping here today. Uh, Mr. DeVoe writes, I was just wondering if you're ever going to bring back the skins format. I really enjoy watching that. Sincerely, Kenneth DeVoe. Well, I guess the only honest answer to that, Mr. DeVoe, is we don't know. And there's Winchell there. right in the pocket again. This time he leaves the five pin, so a nine in the spare and another spare opportunity. Well, there's nothing officially in the works now, but if we could, we would. We would bring it back. It's not really our decision. Oh, he missed the spare. Just missed it. Tough shot. Those single pins are not easy. You may think they're easy, but they're not easy, even to the best of the professional bowlers. That's going to come close to tying this match up. Missed it on the other side. So nine in the spare. And a nine box. And now it's up to Hugh Ferguson. A chance to tie this match right up as he works on a second mark. Looking for some bonus money. Hugh has been under the bright lights before and felt the pressure of the TV cameras. Although not for some time. Right in the pocket. Three marks in a row. $50 in bonus money. And he will perhaps take the lead. Oh, he definitely has. And a great opportunity now for bonus money and maybe a double strike. He has taken the lead. The pins do not reset correctly, so we'll have to have a we'll have a slight delay as the pins are reset for Hugh Ferguson. Fifty dollars in bonus money for Hugh. And he starts out the third string with three marks in a row. We told you earlier we have $1,100 in our triple strike jackpot. You start thinking about that with the first strike thrown by Hugh. Let's we'll see if he can put a two-bagger up there. We'll see if he can hit the head pin two frames in a row. Missed it, but look at this. It didn't matter, did it? The head pin went down. Oh, boy. <laughs> How does he do that? All right, Hugh, you've got to use the wood this time. You don't have any choice. Well, there's plenty of wood out there. Yeah. Pretty good chance even I could make this shot, huh, Dick? Six out of ten times you'd make that <laughs> shot. There's Hugh with the spare. So he is red hot. Four marks in four boxes for Hugh, including $75 in bonus money now. Now we watch John Winchell try to battle back. Tough shot here for John. There's some wood that can help him there. He missed oh. the object pin, the two pin. Didn't miss it by much, but a miss nonetheless. And an eight box. So John. Finds himself on the short end. After leading most of the way, Hugh Ferguson has taken control of the match here in the third string. And John will have a 7-10 split to show for his efforts. So John is hitting the head pin. 
not getting any breaks. Hugh Ferguson is missing the head pin and, and getting, getting all the breaks. Getting all the breaks. But you know something, that very seldom works two weeks in a row. If Hugh should go on to win next week, I don't think he'll have that kind of luck if he doesn't start hitting the head pin. Well, let's see if he can bounce it off the wall. He cannot. He will be open in the fourth, and Hugh Ferguson will have the lead. Ten box, 46. It's a lead of 15 pins plus a ball for Hugh Ferguson. When we come back after the break, we're coming back to Lita Lanes in Nashville, New Hampshire. Heading down the home stretch on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. John Winchell bowling in the uh, sixth frame. Check it, seventh frame of the third string. Hugh Ferguson has run off eight straight marks in the third string on his way to an incredible single string. He had a 95 half. He's going to be flirting with a 200 string. Yeah, he needed a double strike for that. That's, I'd call that flirting. Wow. An eight box for John Winchell. There you can see it. We were away for a few frames, unfortunately, due to uh, time constraints. But you'll get to see the end of the match. $75 in bonus money for Hugh Ferguson, all in the third string. And he's pulled away from John Winchell, who led by 21 after one, by eight after two, and now trails by about 50 pins. We've never had an all-mark game that I'm aware of. Not since you and I have done the show, Dick. John will be open in the eighth frame. What a string that Hugh Ferguson has put together here in the third string. He's, he's in the 190 zone right now if he keeps good marks going. A uh, good fill, I should say. And that'll be a nine box. And now here comes Hugh Ferguson, the his veteran only, from Hanover, Massachusetts. His only falter was in the eighth frame. He had a strike in the seventh, and then on his first ball in the eighth, he threw a, a two or a three, but he made the spare. So it didn't hurt him on the pinfall. Eight consecutive marks for Hugh Ferguson. We're in frame number nine. Well, he didn't grab the head pin, but look at this. Well, here's his first serious challenge of this match in terms of a difficult spare. If that wood moves over a little bit more, it's no good to him right there. And well, He just makes it uh, on its own without the wood. Yeah. The one and the seven. To try to keep the string alive. Here it goes. Will it go? He uh, will not get it. The string ends at eight straight marks for Hugh Ferguson. And, and a, a nice hand. round of applause from the crowd here at not, Lita Lanes. Not very often you'll see eight consecutive marks. And a nine uh, box. He is at 162. <laughs> so it'll not be the highest string we've had on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. I can't recall off the top of my head what the highest was, but I think we had one, one, a 180 earlier on. Uh, Did we not? I believe Rich Clark had a 190. Did he? Uh, I think in one of the past seasons. We'll look it up real fast. And here's another opportunity for a mark for Hugh in the 10th frame. And the wood surrounds those two pins, and he's got a real good setup for it. <laughs> so will Hugh finish with a mark? Nine marks in ten frames. Possible 182 with a mark and a strike. Here it is. He's at 172 plus a ball. A stunning turn of events for Hugh Ferguson, who couldn't put two good boxes together for his first two strings. So Hugh Ferguson, the winner, will come back to meet our bowlers when we return to Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire, after this on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. In the interest of time, we're going right to the bonus ball contest. Hugh Ferguson will roll a ball. We'll try to match him up with a winner at home. And look at that, a strike. He continues right where he left off. And Mike Moran reaches into the bin and pulls out a card. Let's see if we've got a winner. It's Rita Colby of Manchester, New Hampshire, and she picked eight. Not a winner, a consolation prize from NNR Trophies in Winchenden. 
for Rita Colby of Manchester, New Hampshire. A terrific triple for Hugh Ferguson, a 393, a 175, $175 in bonus money. He finished with a 174. On he goes next week. And the police chief, Bill Trefel, senior bowler, will bowl another seasoned professional, Hugh Ferguson, next week. We'll see you then. For Mike Morin and our entire WNDS TV 50 crew, I'm Dick Lutz. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Candlepin Stars and Stripes.